Welcome back to channel everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about team site versus communication site difference in modern SharePoint and which one you should choose while creating a site in your SharePoint. There is a significant difference between these two. We'll talk about the major ones and what exactly you get inside these two. So as the team site name suggests, it's a, a private space to collaborate with your teams. That means if you want to collaborate with your team members privately and want to share a content with them in a team space, you should consider creating a team site and communication site on the other hand is more of like a engaging and informing viewers about the content you have so it's like if you have some hr site some news to publish you can create communication sites for that and if you want to collaborate in real time you should consider team site but this is not all the major difference between these two so we'll first go to the microsoft official documentations where they have explained to you about team versus communication site which one should i choose and there i have and there they have given kind of uh, detailed explanations about these two but i'll go to the feature comparisons part of this one and we'll talk about a little bit what they have given so first thing is that who create the sites in both the cases sites owner or admins can create the sites okay and who create the content as they have mentioned in team sites, all members are content author who jointly create and edit content. And against that, in a communication site, there's a small number of content author and much larger number of content reader or consumer. But in this point, you can pretty much change this or tweak this according to your requirements. Even if into team site, if you want a small number of users to become a content author and large audience to become a content reader you can pretty much achieve that here as well there is uh, no challenge i would say uh, in this part for these both two there is a security they have mentioned and in team side they have mentioned microsoft 365 groups and in communication side they have mentioned a sharepoint groups that means if you have to manage security of a communication site you can manage through that using SharePoint groups, but in team side, you can manage through M365 groups. But the point here is that in team site as well, you can manage your security through a SharePoint group as well. And other part is Microsoft 365 groups. We'll talk about this in detail, what Microsoft 365 group is all about and what you get inside that. Okay. So I'm going to the default setting for external sharing. Both has uh, the external sharing team site by default has it enabled and communication site by default it is disabled but you can enable it anytime so uh, that is required navigations they have mentioned in team site by default you get left navigations and communication site by default you get a top navigations but in team site you can convert your left navigation into top navigation as well we'll showcase you in the example uh, right after this both are multilinguals and there is when you create a team site what you get that is a planner board one note email address group shared calendar shared mailbox opportunity to connect with microsoft teams but in communication site you get nothing but a communication site so the major points from these feature comparisons which stand out for me is a microsoft 365 groups and if you see the last point it is also related to microsoft 365 groups which your team side has and communication side doesn't have okay so we'll talk about what this m365 group is all about and how it is provisioned so if we go to our m365 groups it's uh, written into a Microsoft uh, documentations that with Microsoft 365 groups, you can give a group of people access to a collection of shared resources. And these resources include 
a shared mailbox that means if you have a m365 groups you have a shared mailbox for that uh, groups which all members inside that group can access a shared calendars a sharepoint document library that means there will be a sharepoint site created whenever you provision a m365 group and that sharepoint site will always be a team site not a communication site okay a planner task a one notebook these all things are shared okay power bi viva engage a team that you can provision into your ms teams a roadmaps a stream so these all are part of your m365 groups whenever you create a m365 groups these all will be created by default talking about m365 groups as i've already mentioned about m365 groups but there are five type of groups in microsoft 365 so one is microsoft 365 groups security groups mail enabled security group distribution group shared mailbox so these all are groups in microsoft 365 and the one which we are talking about that is this first one microsoft 365 groups and from where you can create these groups in our case microsoft 365 groups from where we can create this you can create it from azure ad m365 admin center exchange admin center outlook teams sharepoint planner yammer stream power bi roadmap project of the web so that means if i'm creating a sharepoint team site i am creating a microsoft 365 groups if i'm creating a team inside my teams i'm creating a sharepoint team site okay or a m365 groups i would say and that m365 groups include all these resources that i have mentioned to you and it include a sharepoint document library as well so uh now we'll go to our this uh you know team side or communication side panel and uh, first i will try to create a communication side and i will name it like test com site okay and just check if the site name is available or not it is available this will be my site address it asks for a site description and it asks you to select a language so this is all these four information it asks when you are trying to create a communication site once you click on finish it will take some times and your communication site will be created so as you can see uh, there is one point which was about the navigation and communication side by default you get this top navigations okay so now uh, we will uh, go to sharepoint again create site this time we'll try to create a team site and i'll name it like test team site and you will see that here we are getting more options than while we are trying to create a communication site we are getting an one option that is group email address that is means there will be a group mailbox will be created and uh, the email address will be test team site site address will be this which we get into communication site as well description we get there as well here is one more option that we are getting is uh, our privacy setting that is whether i want to create a public or a private team site so public means anyone in your organization can access this that means who are part of this uh, sharepoint tenant they can access this site if i select public and if i select private only member can access this site so when i say member that means i will have to add some members to this site language i can select next and you will see here is the options to add member because i have selected a private team site it asks me to add members to this team site so remember while i'm adding these members these members will be part of my m365 groups so let's suppose i'll add a user here 
and there is two options member owners and I will click on finish. So now you will see that the major difference that we can see is in our communication site we have this uh, predefined template and in team sites we have uh, this look and feel with this left navigations. So if I go to my team site here if I go to change the look and uh, that is the options of navigation. This is as of now vertical. I can convert this into horizontal. You will see it will appear like same as my communication site. So now the one point which has been mentioned here about navigations that we have covered here into our team site. It has now both has top navigations. Okay. Theme wise I can apply site templates to this team site same as my communication site has. So let's suppose if I select this one and use this template it will take few seconds to apply the template and will have kind of similar look and feel that our communication site has. So now you see we have transformed our team sites into this good looking communication site kind of structure. In your communication site you might have some extra template which you might not have into your team site. So that's the one thing you have to keep in mind but otherwise it's the kind of same situation. So the thing is if I go to my communication site and if I want to share this communication sites to any of the users within the organizations I can go to this uh, share site and I can add site owners, members and visitors to this uh, particular site. The good way of doing that is if I go to the site permissions that is advanced permission options in this communication site you will see there is members, owners and visitor groups. I can create my groups here any customized groups I can create any permissions level a customized permission level that is up to me how I want to create and at the site level I can give customized access to a document library based on uh, you know inheriting the permission or by doing a stop inheritance I can give permission to specific set of users as well so this both functionality we have into communication side into a team side as well. There was a point which I've mentioned about uh, they have mentioned about security. They have like mentioned communication side you only have a SharePoint groups and in team side you have M365 groups. The point is that in team side we have both. So now if I go to my team site you see there is a members option which we do not find into our communication site. Okay. If we go to our communication site we don't find that here. So this members means when we are coming to this membership this membership is basically about the M365 groups. This is not limited to our this SharePoint team site. If you want to manage permissions of your team site only not the M365 groups for that what you have to do is go to this gear icon there is a site permission and there is advanced permission setting. If you go here you will see exactly the same structure that we had into our communication site. Members, owners and visitors. You can create your custom groups, permissions level, you can add user. It will be limited to your this team site. Okay. But if you add members into this particular group membership it will be provisioned across all the applications that means whichever user is added here those user will have access to your shared outlook inbox shared calendars teams as well okay so let me go here and try to add a member here so let's suppose if I add a user and I made this user as owner and save it. 
Now this user is added here as an owner. If I go to the site permission of this team site and check into the ownership, you will see there are these are the different groups then uh, which we see here into the members. So this members is basically for M365's your group membership. And if you want to manage your site permissions that you can manage through here by adding users either from here or the easiest way I would suggest or more managed ways go to the advanced permission setting and see here into the owners. So you see that the user which I've added into members is not visible into my owners group here. So if I go to my MS teams and uh, try to uh, create a new team, there is the options from scratch or from group or team. So I'll select from group or teams and I will say Microsoft 365 groups. It will give me all the option that I have. So here you will see I have created a site with test team site and it's giving me options test team site. And if I select this and create this, this says this will permanently add teams to your existing Microsoft 365 groups. And if I click here, it will provision my MS Teams into my Teams applications. And if I go to the uh, membership of this one, you will see there is two owner and there is one members. So from where it is coming, it is coming from this one. There is two owners and one members. So you can provision your uh, this M365 groups from any of the application that you would like. So now in this particular teams that we have created, if you upload any of the files here, it will be visible in your team sites inside the document folders. You will see there is a general folder already provisioned, which you can see here as well. So let's suppose if I upload any of the file here, I've uploaded a financial sample data and I go here and try to refresh and it has shown me that here as well. So the point here is that the major difference between a communication site versus a team site is that in a team site you get a Microsoft 365 groups which you can provision across all of your applications and you can distribute the membership of that particular group and you can collaborate in real times using that particular uh, you know group membership that you can access from here. So for me this is the major difference there are other differences as well. Uh, but the major one I feel is this one and you should consider while you are creating a communication site versus a team site. I hope that it was clear to you while choosing between a team site and a communication site, how you can choose between these two. Please let me know in the comment what you think about this. And if you do like this video, don't forget to subscribe to Tech. Thank you so much for watching.